Eleanor is my name. My age is 35 years old. Every year, I pamper myself by purchasing high-end Valentine's Day chocolates. This is the narrative of how I began to treat myself. This occurrence occurred five years ago. I was worried about my husband, Benjamin, whom I had married three years before. Even when we were dating, he struggled with communication, particularly over the phone. He was the type to save texts and phone calls. It's all business. However, he now takes his cell phone with him whenever he goes to the bathroom. To be clear, he does not engage in phone gaming. I don't think he's the sort to go online at random. He's not particularly adept with technology in general. Even when his employer provided him with a laptop, he attended a special training to learn how to use it. My husband is four years my senior, and he didn't have many opportunities to utilize computers in school. So he's completely useless when it comes to machines or information technology. So when a guy like him starts bringing his phone into the restroom, I can't help but notice. Perhaps he's grown accustomed to his cell phone and has begun to use it to play games, read books, or watch videos. But it made an impression because he never glances at his phone when he's with me. Wouldn't he do the same thing in the living room if he were reading books or watching movies on his phone? Could he be lying? But what about a guy like him? He's really let himself go since we got married. Looking across at his stomach, I concluded that he was not cheating. Despite this, I was still conflicted. It was our third wedding anniversary. Anniversaries are truly wonderful and joyous occasions. I had planned for us to have a wonderful supper and share our memories of one another. I informed Benjamin before he left for work, tonight is our anniversary, so I'll treat you. Make an effort to get home from work as soon as possible. I bought a lovely bottle of champagne, made a fancy dinner, and had a cake from a bakery I like. I sat and waited for Benjamin to return home. And I waited, and I waited, and then some. I decided to take a bath while I waited, and then I realized it was already midnight. I told him he could come home early, but the day had already passed. I became concerned, wondering if something had happened. To be honest, one of the things that upset me the most about my marriage was his refusal to text me to keep me updated. Even if he's going to be late for work, he never tells me. But this is his first time doing so. I was concerned after pledging to get home early. But just as I was about to pick up the phone to contact him, I heard the front door open. As I went to the door, I noticed his shirt was unusually winkled. Welcome back. Oh, you were asleep. What do you mean I was sleeping? Obviously not. Didn't I warn you? Today is our wedding anniversary. I looked at my spouse, slightly perplexed. Please accept my apologies. I entirely forgot about it. Right, I don't care any longer. I apologize. I was stuck in the office since there was a problem at work. I've told you this before. But, if you're going to be late, couldn't you just text me? I don't want to fight on our anniversary, but I did take the effort to cook and prepare everything. So I should be able to express my displeasure. On the one hand, I want to relax. On the other hand, I want to blow up. But it's also late, and I need to sleep. I sincerely apologize. I'll make it up to you. My spouse apologized and repeatedly hacked me. You appear to be sorry. So, because you had problems at work, I'll let you leave. You should be thankful for my forgiveness. That's what I said. I locked my gaze on my husband. I've prepared a change of clothes for you so get washed up and ready to go. I persuaded him. I apologize. Thank you very much. My husband hurriedly removed his shoes and went to the bathroom. I became aware of a strong odor at that time. Was that it? It's kind of like an airport duty-free shop. It would be wonderful if it was weaker. However, because it is overly powerful, the aroma appears heavy and weird. 
Before entering the shower, I double-checked the t-shirt my husband had removed. I also observed how crumpled his dress shirt was when he entered the house. He only works at his desk. So, what kind of mishap could have occurred at his workplace? The aroma of a duty-free shop. It has the aroma of a high-end perfume. His socks had a nasty stench about them. So there was a horrible odor festival outside the restroom, centered on his filthy clothes. Make sure to wash your feet before getting out of the shower. Through the bathroom door, I screamed out to my husband. Oh, did they stink? He inquired. Yes, you arrived home late. So today was a disaster. I left the alum water spray in the bathroom for you to use when you finished washing up. Okay. My response surprised my husband. He was speaking and acting normally, but the perfume smell irritated me. Could he have gone out with a woman on our anniversary? Thinking about it, he's been coming home late a lot lately, though not as late as tonight. Nonetheless, despite the fact that his feet stink and he has a somewhat larger tummy, there are certainly a variety of reasons why a woman would be drawn to him. I decided to check my husband's phone while he was still in the restroom. I knew he didn't have a password on his phone because he's not adept with technology, so I could easily check it. Bingo. He did have a lover on his phone. I discovered text messages he sent to a woman named Ellie. He's not the kind to text, so I can't say he texted her frequently, but he would message her to coordinate when they'd meet. So he texted her more than I did, and my fist clenched. He also met her today. Ellie texted him shortly after they met today. Today was fantastic. So they must have slept together, leaving me alone on our anniversary to do this, because his shirt was wrinkled. I was angry instead of sad, and I wanted to kick him out of my life. Looking through their texts, I noticed that he promised to take Ellie to a fresh new fancy French restaurant for their three-month anniversary. I haven't even been there yet. I think I'll have to take action on this. I photographed their text using my phone. Even if Benjamin isn't very good with his phone, if I simply transmit the messages and photographs to him, he might find out. So I concluded this was a better option. Ellie and my husband's three-month anniversary arrived two weeks later. My husband, unaware that I had discovered everything, told me, I'll be late tonight, and left the house to go to work. Yes, that sounds wonderful. I'm not going to be home either. So, dear, I'll see you later. 8 p.m. My husband and Ellie exited their taxi. I arrived at the French restaurant 30 minutes before they were supposed to arrive to keep an eye on them. As I followed them, I thought to myself, you're finally here. Stop. I just mentioned this as they were ready to walk into the restaurant. Huh. Ellie and my husband turned around. My husband's face became pale at this point. Nutley, N? Yes, this is me. Nutley, N? What exactly are you doing here? Ellie and Benjamin stared between my husband and me. Huh. This might be your wife. She inquired about Benjamin. Ellie stared at me as if she'd won, which irritated me even more. She was even more stunning in person than in the images. I felt a little overwhelmed, but I wasn't willing to give up. This is a battle between two females. My name is Benjamin's girlfriend. It's a pleasure to meet you, wife. Benjamin appeared surprised by Ellie's behavior. Wait, Ellie. Eleanor, calm down. This is not what you expected. It's all right. You're going to treat her to a French dinner, right? In honor of your anniversary, allow me to join you. I strolled into the restaurant, putting pressure on him with my smile. I should take advantage of this by having my husband buy me a lovely supper. That woman and I, well, Ellie and I, sat down at a table with Benjamin, and our horrific evening began. Ellie, correct? How did you come across my husband? What? Ellie appeared to be upset because I was upsetting them on their anniversary. 
My mood, on the other hand, improved as she became more irritated. My spouse was tense. It was amusing to watch the two of them. I dated Tom before you two met. I know Tom a lot better than you do. Oh. So Tom dated both of us at the same time but married me. Copying Ellie and calling my husband Tom appeared to aggravate him. That guy appeared to be hanging on for dear life. Yes, Tom replied strangely. Oh, you're serious. I broke up with Ellie first, but we eventually reconciled. Because Ellie happens to work at the tailor shop where I frequent. So you've brought this on yourself. With icy eyes, I looked at him. I could see how terrified my spouse was of me. What exactly is your issue? Sorry, but I have no intention of ending my relationship with Tom. I finally had the opportunity to see him again. I was completely taken aback when he married you. I'm going to split up with Ellie. If he said anything like that, I might think of a way out of this. But, seeing how my spouse is now, I was beginning to doubt the likelihood of a future with him. I appear to have only one option. I'm willing to give up everything just to be with Tom. That's all I'm looking for. Ellie stated this while staring me down. And what are your thoughts, Tom? I inquired about my husband. Benjamin appeared to be terrified. So, what do you think? He replied in hushed tones. It's fine. Just be truthful. I said. Oh. Well. All he could say was I, Tom. You like me as well. Right? Please, then. Break up with one another. Please give him to me. Benjamin stayed deafeningly silent. I don't need a man who is all over the place. That's just great with me. You'll regret it, as I warned. What exactly are you saying? I won't, Ellie declared triumphantly. And so Benjamin and I decided to divorce. Benjamin swiftly moved out of our house two months after that night and began living with Ellie. This house was formerly known as Benjamin's residence. But Ellie stated that even if it is the house, we will give you anything you desire. Simply divorce him as soon as possible. So I got the house without any problems. The divorce process initially confused me, but I was able to piece it together and even get alimony from them. She stated that she would go to any length to be with him. I was wondering how I would get my alimony when I got a call from an unknown number. Hello? I apologize. Please forgive me. Ellie's voice was heard. I never gave her my phone number, so she must have discovered it in Benjamin's contact list. But why would she suddenly change her mind? Had she hit her limit? I laughed as I considered that idea. What is the point of this? With a smile, I inquired. I had no idea. Why do Tom's feet stink so much? They weren't all that horrible when we first met. I couldn't help but giggle when I heard how unpleasant Ellie's voice sounded because of Tom's stinky feet. And he chats and snores so loudly in his sleep. Even earplugs are insufficient. I haven't been able to get any sleep. I laughed and said I was the same after Ellie described her troubles over the last two months. He keeps ordering stuff through the mail and dressing in fancy clothes that don't fit him or his profession. He's extremely careless with money. We won't be able to pay the alimony if things continue like this. What the hell is going on? I feel like I walked right into a lime mine. I couldn't contain myself any longer. I couldn't stop giggling. After nearly a year of marriage, my husband developed an athlete's foot. Since then, his feet have smelled terrible. I'd been purchasing essential oils and alum water for him. To reduce the stench in some way. He's always talked to himself in his sleep. However, since gaining weight, his snoring has gotten worse. He now sounds like a bazooka. I was also concerned about it. He was presumably skinnier when they were dating, and they may not have slept together. When it comes to spending, 
He is the sort to buy items when he is weary or upset. I've warned him several times to be cautious. But I generally have to keep an eye on him to make sure he doesn't buy too much. I can only imagine how much he is buying now that no one is stopping him. Oh my goodness, how bizarre. I told you that, didn't I? You'd go back and read it again. You should have told me if you knew. You weren't paying attention to me. I responded by making fun of her. You're the absolute worst. You have no right to say that. It's especially worse when you're after a married man. That's why I expressed regret. And I beg you to forgive me. That's right. What exactly do you mean? What made you apologize? I'll return Tom to you. So please forget what occurred. This is too much for me to bear. I busted out laughing once more. She stated that she was willing to give up everything for him. She could only endure two months. I'm okay. I don't require him. To be honest, my husband has a lot of issues, and I've considered divorce several times. But I was sleeping, talking, snoring, and having stinky feet. It's not that he's a bad person or that those are things he picked, and everyone has flaws. If one is cautious, they can also eliminate their spending problem. It's strange to say, but I was fine riding alone with him. More significantly, he has a gentle soul. Which I appreciated because I'm a bit hot-tempered myself. I could be upset at him, but he was always pleasant. His personality was pleasant, so I could overlook his odors and noises. But there is one thing I cannot forgive, cheating. As a result, I no longer care about him. No way. But if I divorce him, I'll still have to give you alimony. This irritates me. Okay, fine. As Ellie began to cry, I laughed. Oh, yes. Since we're on the subject of Tom's flaws, let me tell you the worst. What? Ellie's voice told me she was terrified. Isn't Christmas just around the corner? I'm sure the Benjamin family will get together. As a result, you should prepare. Why? They are decent folks. However, practically all of them snore loudly. It also possesses an athlete's foot. There's a potential you'll contract an athlete's foot as well. So be cautious when using the shower. Benjamin picked it up during our visit to his parents' house. Despite the fact that I've been doing my best to heal it since we found it, I could hear Ellie take a sharp gasp. Isn't it wonderful that you gave up everything to be with Tom? Exactly what you desired. Congratulations. Ellie received my heartfelt congratulations. And then I hung up the phone. Oh, how revitalizing. Goodbye, stinky feet. Hello, snoring bazooka. Five years have gone by. Ellie didn't want to be unmarried and responsible for paying alimony on her own. As a result, she married Benjamin. They split up less than two years later. For Benjamin, receiving a woman's rejection for the second time must have been challenging. And he returned to me, saying, we should try again. But I choose to ignore him. When money runs out, so does a relationship. I blocked his phone number once he had paid off the alimony he owed me. Using the alimony money I received. I started my own aromatherapy school. I learned a lot about essential oils while helping my husband with his stinky feet. It had become a hobby of mine, therefore, I reasoned that this type of employment would be an excellent opportunity to merge my interests and career. I've had positive feedback, and my student base is growing by the day. My school was even highlighted on television the other day. You never know what you will achieve in life. I never expected to gain anything from my attempts to assist my husband with his feet. So I have to say that I am rather pleased with myself, especially given how busy I am these days. But I'm having a good time doing what I love. So, let me get back to work.